I was that job for my salvation. I wasn't always a parent worker. I was a heroin crack addict for 20 years, and my job in was my first ever paid job. <laughs> <laughs> I come from a, a dysfunctional family and my mum was a drug addict and she was a prostitute so I was born in a, a very dysfunctional household. My mum, uh, my grandmother, she also was a prostitute so my mum used to my grandmother's clients and as a youngster I got abused by one of my mum's hunters. Um, you know, so a lot of secrets was kept in, in, my, in our house. Do you know what I mean? It was very dark, a lot of, a lot of nastiness went on in that house. And I, I'd go to school, right, and I'd see all the other kids getting picked up from school from their parents, right? And I hated them because it was something that I didn't have. Do you know what I mean? When the teacher would be talking to me, anything, I'd do exactly the opposite of what I was told to do. I hated people. I hated, I hated everything in life in front of me. So I used to see these kids getting picked up from school and deep down I, I really wanted something like that. I wanted love. I didn't understand it then because I thought my household was normal. Do you know what I mean? You know, I'd, I'd go home, there's incidents where I'd go home and I'd just walk in the house and my mum would be on, in the front room um, screwing a hunter. And it was like, you know, and it was for me just to come out of the house and just ignore that. So I couldn't take people onto my house because I'd never know what, what to expect when I'd walk through that door. So my mum also used to cut her wrists all the time. I mean, I've learned um, as I got older that my mum was a, um, a child prostitute. So I can imagine, obviously, she's cutting her wrists for all that pain. But when she used to cut her wrists right, she used to call us all downstairs to come and witness, to watch her for some reason. She used to just want us all to sit down and like, Mandy, go and get the razor box. Do you know, it was, it was like a ritual thing that used to go on in my mum's house. You couldn't see my mum's arms for, the, for the, all the cuts. And then she started on her face and on her neck. So it was really, it was crazy. And in them times when I was little, um, she used to, when they used to come and get her, the, the uh, mental hospital, they used to come and get her, they used to um, wrap her in, um, you know, uh, the strange kids. They used to use all that in them times. You know, so it was like, but again, it was like the norm. Go and get the razors, mum cut herself, cut her wrist and hold her hand up, the blood all dripping. And then she'd be sort of like a child and say, Mandy, help me. Do you know what I mean? And like, obviously now I'm the adult and I've got my younger brothers and sisters. But I remember one day, right, you know, I was so hurt and angry, frustrated, because I couldn't understand why is this woman cutting her wrist and asking me to go and run next door and get help. Do you know what I mean? Enough was enough and I got fed up a bit. So one day she asked me to go and get go and call for help and I wouldn't do it. I said, no, you I said, die. I wish she was dead. You know what I mean? I hated her. I hated that, uh, hated what she was doing, what she was making me do, what she was making me see. I couldn't understand it. Who is this woman? Do you know what I mean? She's supposed to be my mother. Why is she acting like this? Why does she call us nigger this and nigger that? Why do you know what I mean? I couldn't I couldn't comprehend it as a child. So I, I, I wouldn't go and call the ambulance, then my little brother, my younger brother, he took over and then it went so on after him, the next um, younger sister, they took over, you know. Growing up I thought my, my mum told me, right, that my dad was dead, right, what I didn't realise, right, my father was actually, actually a punter. When I say a punter, I mean a client uh, of, the, of the prostitute, who was my mum. So when, 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 um, when my mum had children, for him, he stopped paying my grandmother money because like my mum, he used to have to pay my grandmother money to be seeing my mother. But when she had children, he decided to stop paying. So that's when my, my, my grandmothers took us away from my dad. So growing up, I thought I didn't have a dad. Right, she took us to Yorkshire, right, which was very difficult. There wasn't many black kids in Yorkshire. Do you know what I mean? So it's sort of like, when I grew up, when I was growing up, I had to fight. That was the only way I could survive. Anybody look at me, I would go and fight them. And if I couldn't fight them with my fist, I'd pick something up and hit them with it. Because I was very angry, I was very rageful. And, you know, and rage is a, is a serious thing. You get strong with rage. So I believed I could fight anything or anyone because that's the only way I knew how to survive. Anyway, one day, my mom, She's cut her wrist and she's drunk and, and, and she decides to tell me that your dad's not dead. Because like, 
growing up, my mum said that my dad's dead. And she gave me a telephone number of a, of a gambling house in West End, uh, down Green Street, which my dad run. And, and I phoned this number up and um, my, wasn't, I don't know who answered, but anyway, they went and got my dad. And I was just so happy because I see this as a ticket out of my mum's house. Mm. I see this as a way out. Anyway, I've ended up going to London to go and stay with my dad, which was just as bad. It was a gambling house, you know what I mean? To go and stay with the with the uh, prostitutes at, um, opposite the gambling house, so it's just as chaotic. But I found it very exciting. Do you know what I mean? Because in, in a sense, right, I've come from Yorkshire, which is a, a, a lot of white people down there, into a black community, and I felt more. Ex I could see my identity more. Do you know what I mean? But I very soon grew up not liking black people or not liking white people. I didn't like any Thank people. You. I didn't like none of them. I didn't feel accepted by any of them, you know, so um, I'm half black, half white, I decided to stick with my own, right, and then obviously it's trouble everywhere, you know what I mean, I never found happiness anywhere, but as a, as a child, right, when I was, when I was small, right, I used to always say, when I grow up, I'm going to have children, do you know what I mean, I'm going to have children, I'm going to look after my children, right, so this is what I ended up doing. I ended up going I'm out on the street. I see this guy who looked all right, the mentality that I had. Okay, meet a man, get pregnant, a very immature mentality, thinking, yeah, have a baby and everything's gonna be all right. Well, that's what I did. And, and it was the most devastating thing that I did in my life. Got pregnant, had a baby, and it was the most devastating thing because at the end of the day, I've had this baby. I didn't want to look after this baby. So what I used to do, obviously I was thieving because that's what I grew up to be with a thief. Right, I was thieving, and so I used to pay people to look after my, my, my son because I didn't want to look after my son. Do you know what I mean? I wanted to go out, I thought, well, I'm the grafter, I'll go out there and earn, but I'm going to pay somebody else to look after my son. So that's what I did. But deep inside, it was hurting me. I was, hurt, you know what I mean? I never felt satisfied on the inside. There was always something missing. I thought, yeah, get pregnant, get married, and everything's going to be all right. But no, it wasn't enough. I still felt this emptiness inside. By then, I was taking heroin and, and smoking, um, smoking cannabis, uh, dropping pills, and that was all the norm. That was all the norm. That's what people did, in, in, in the, the people that I mixed with, that's just what they did. But there was this emptiness. I was grafting, earning money, and even the materialistic things wasn't, wasn't holding it no more. For a little while, everything was cold, do you know what I mean? Having a nice house, Anybody that used to come in my house had to be old in, had to be old in drugs. It wasn't allowed in my house unless they had drugs or unless they had some plan to go and earn money to get the drugs. That was the only sort of people that was allowed to come in my house. But there was this horror, I was still empty inside. Do you know what I mean? There was an emptiness, there was a void, and I didn't understand it. My, the, my mentality couldn't comprehend that, that, that this wasn't the way to find happiness. So eventually I goes into Holloway prison, in and out of prison. I was a heroin and crack addict for 20 years. For them, for them 20 years, I was in and out, in and out, in and out. Do you know what I mean? When I first went in Holloway, it was a laugh. It was all right. Do you know what I mean? Um, a lot of the girls in there knew, knew my family. So I was sort of like well respected, had a lot of respect in there. But then after a few years, it wasn't funny anymore. Do you know what I mean? It was not funny. You know what I mean? It wasn't funny going into that reception, officers seeing you and calling you by your name, all right, Mandy, back again. I didn't find it amusing at all. You know, and every time I was in Holloway, right, I'd say, right, by then I'd have two children. Every time I was in Holloway, I'd say, when I come out, I'm going to go and pick up my kids and I'm gonna, you know what I mean, really get my home together. Every time I come out, I'd end up down the cross, pick up the smack and the crack. My kids would stay where they was, and the days turned into weeks, the weeks turned into months, the months turned into 11 years. I didn't see the two children um, that I had. So what I did, the mentality, again, crazy mentality, okay, I dismissed them two children. I thought, let me have another two, let me have more children to try and replace their children. And that's what I tried to do. But you can't replace something. I still had that pain and suffering, as you know, deep down within. So I've got another, another two children, but I could see the same thing, the same cycle happening again. You know, and so I ended up putting the two, the other two children that I had, I, I ended up putting them into care. And that was something that you don't do. If you're from the streets, you do not 
put your children into care. I was brought up in children's home and foster care, so you just don't trust the system. But I knew that I had to do something very drastic in order to me, in order for me to make a drastic change in my life. Because all I ever wanted to be was a mum. All I ever wanted was a mum. Do you know what I mean? And it was something that I desperately wanted inside. I desperately was searching for love. You know what I mean? Love, I didn't even know what love was. You know, I was looking for love in the wrong places, in, in money, in drugs, in, in men, in materialistic things. But the great thing about that, I went through all that and realised that that's not it. So I thank God for that, that I did go through it and realised that that ain't it. Do you know what I mean? So. I put my other two children into care and then, and then six months later after that I ended up going into a rehab, um, a normal rehab, but by that, let me just uh, backtrack a little bit, 